Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Canine Substitution by Neil Kravitz. What I enjoyed about this lecture is Neil broke it down into real clinical tips as to how we get better outcomes. I'm going to summarise two aspects of the lecture, that of bracket selection and looking at recontouring of the tooth. Now when it came to bracket selection, Neil went back a step and said what are the goals when it comes to canine substitution? The canine tooth itself, our main goal is to reduce the canine root prominence. But that's not just alone in itself as a tooth when it comes to canine substitution. We actually have changes to the rest of the arch as well. So we have premolar substitution occurring. And in this case, we want to hide the palatal cusp of the upper first premolar to disguise it as a canine. There's also an effect when it comes to our molar interdigitation. When we're finishing to a full unit class two, we need to make some changes to ensure we get good interdigitation. So when it came to looking at bracket selection, Neil spoke about four different options we have available. And what I loved about the lecture is that Neil showed one case where he used two different approaches, showing clearly there's not one size which fits all. Option one is to use an upper central incisor bracket. It has 17 degrees of positive root torque. It's really going to help to reduce that canine eminence. However, we have to do a, a facial plasty or labial plasty to flatten the tooth to allow the bracket to seat accurately. Our second option is to use an upper lateral incisor bracket. We have 10 degrees of positive root torque here. Now, we also have to carry out a labial or facial plasty and a potential step out bend as the in out of a typical lateral incisor bracket is less than what we need. Option three is that of using a canine bracket but inverting it. So we flip it and go from a minus seven degree torque to a plus seven degree torque. The advantage is here, well there's no plasty which is required, but we have less torque than our other options, so we're likely to have to add some palatal root torque during treatment. And the final option is using a contralateral lower premolar bracket. The advantage is here, well we've got a 70 degree torque when we do it this way. Also positive tip. This was a suggestion by Marco Rosa, and the advantage here is that there's no plasty which is needed in the process. When it comes to looking at our premolar, we can offset the bracket and position it more distally. In doing so, it helps to hide the palatal cusp. This is something that myself and Dr. Krolos have written about on our website, www.orthoinsummary.com, in the blog section for more detail. Now, when it comes to the molar, when it comes to our molar tube selection, what we really want to do is get good interdigitation. Now, the upper six tubes typically have 10 degrees of mesolabial rotation inbuilt into it to get good interdigitation for class one. Now, for class two, it is different. We want to induce a mesopalatal rotation of the tooth. So we get good interdigitation in that five, six embrasure space. How do we do that? Well, we simply use the opposing, t opposing arches six or seven tube or band. Now the torque is relatively similar, either minus 20 or minus 10, but the key thing is now we've got that mesopalatal rotation, so we get really good interdigitation at the end. Now the second half I wanted to summarise was looking at tooth reshaping. Now typically when it comes to canine teeth, they can be quite triangular, and Neil finds it's more on the mesial side than the distal side. So frequently interproximal reduction is needed, and we also frequently underdo it. It's really topical to have a recent systematic review by Kalesum in 2021, which has just come out. Now that systematic review showed we have 1.2 millimeters of enamel on the mesial aspect of our upper canine, which is one of the most in the entire arch. So we've got lots to play with there. Professor Parag Fleming very kindly shared this image with me to share with you guys. It gives us a really clear breakdown of how and how much enamel we have on each tooth. So thank you, Professor Fleming, for that. Now, when it comes down to our reduction, there's a mesial distal, but there's also the incisal reduction and on the palatal face to achieve an aesthetic substitution for a canine to a lateral incisor. However, with canine substitution, it can affect the fit across the whole arch. So Neil addressed this by describing the two scenarios where Bolton discrepancy occurs. In a class one canine substitution case, i.e. with extracting the lower arch as well, there was a maxillary excess in the anterior segment. So we need further IPR to achieve good contact with the lower arch. 
Now when it comes to a class 2 finish, this is where we have greater tooth excess in the lower arch. So lower mandibular IPR is then indicated. Now when it comes to the cosmetic bonding side of things, what I really liked is Neil spoke about orthodontics being a feature of this process to facilitate the bonding. Neil spoke about a mesial step out may well be indicated to get the mesial contact point of the canine meeting better together with the upper central incisor. In doing so, we also reduce the occlusal interference, helping out when it comes to the restoration. Neil then spoke about how the buildup is then done, and it's mainly a mesial incisal co co composite buildup. Neil spoke about line angles being a key to help the tooth look narrower. Now, not that I'm a practitioner of line angles, but the concept is relatively straightforward. A line angle is a transition between the proximal surface and the labial face of the tooth. Now, we can make the canine look narrower by having a shallower angle in between the proximal and the labial face. And this gives a perception of a narrower tooth. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Now, Neil Kravitz has published on the topic of canine substitution in the Journal of Clinical Orthodontics. Please do check that out to find out more details. And as always, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.